Woman found her husband doing this with her daughter. Then something terrible happens. Sarah Whitaker, a prominent executive at a blue chip firm, epitomized grace under pressure. She was a woman in a position of power, respected by her peers and valued by her subordinates. As she stepped off the corporate battlefield and into the warm embrace of her home after a long day of boardroom skirmishes, she was expecting nothing but tranquility. Entering the house, she was greeted by an unfamiliar melody. The living room was lit up by the setting sun, casting a warm glow over the scene before her. Richard, her husband, and the rock in her stormy sea of business dealings, was at the piano. Their daughter Emily sat beside him, her small fingers fumbling over the keys under Richard's gentle guidance. As the soft notes of the piano filled the house, they resonated within the hollow chambers of Sarah's heart. A sharp intake of breath was her first response. These were not just keys being pressed, they were her locked away memories being prodded, awakening a dormant beast within her. Her mother's face came unbidden to her mind, stern and unyielding. She could almost hear her admonishments. Music is frivolous, Sarah. It's a wasteful pursuit. Focus on things that matter. These were the refrains of her childhood. The sounds of laughter and music had been replaced by the dry rustling of pages and the echoes of solitary footsteps in their large, eerily quiet house. Sarah shook her head, trying to clear the phantoms from her past, but the room seemed to have transformed. The walls closed in, adorned with the faded wallpaper of her old house. The sweet aroma of her mother's overbrewed tea filled her nostrils as the cheerless rhythm of a rainstorm drummed on her childhood's tin roof. It was as if she was that little girl again, peeking through the keyhole at the neighbor's daughter as she played the piano, dreaming of a life filled with melody. Suddenly, the present reality came crashing back on her. The soft piano notes were now shards of glass piercing her ears. She saw Emily's bright eyes gleaming with happiness and the look of surprise on Richard's face. However, she felt a wave of resentment, not towards them, but at the unfairness of her own past. The years of corporate warfare had equipped her with a suit of armor, but tonight she felt vulnerable. She felt an ache well up within her, a pain that was ancient and raw, untouched by time's healing touch. These suppressed emotions broke their bonds, rising through the surface like a tidal wave. It was an unexpected surge that consumed her, leaving her reeling, facing a long-buried past she had never truly escaped from. Her heart pounded in her chest, a discordant rhythm that clashed with the harmonious melody being played. But she kept her turmoil invisible, forcing a smile as she walked towards her unsuspecting family. The battle within her had only just begun. But for now, she was just a mother coming home to her loving family. Sarah's once bright and energetic disposition began to wane as the ghosts of her past took hold of her present. The discovery of Emily's piano lessons triggered the slow unraveling of Sarah's meticulously constructed world. The migraine headache started first. Like clockwork, at the end of each day, a debilitating pain would grip her, blinding her to everything else. Sleep, once her refuge after a tiring day at work, became her nightmare. Night after night, she was tormented by images of her childhood, of the oppression she felt under her mother's stern gaze, of being forced to sacrifice her own happiness for an austere pursuit of ambition. Each dream was a replay of her past, stark, unfiltered, and terrifyingly vivid. It was as if her subconscious was a relentless director, determined to show her the movie of her own life with all its grim, uncensored scenes. As these vivid nightmares plagued her sleep, her waking hours were filled with fleeting, fragmented flashbacks. They'd come unexpectedly, triggered by innocuous moments, a song on the radio, Emily's laughter, even the simple act of setting the table for dinner. Each of these moments became a trap door, dropping her unceremoniously back into her past, and each time she emerged, she carried a piece of her history back into her present, coloring it with a bleak hue of her traumatic upbringing. Despite her thriving career, where she'd always found solace in her accomplishments, her performance began to suffer. Meetings were missed, projects delayed, 
and her once dependable aura of confidence started to waver. Sarah, the successful executive, was being replaced by Sarah, the haunted survivor. Meanwhile, at home, her resentment for Richard grew, a bitter pill that she swallowed daily. She blamed him for this unforeseen upheaval in her life. Every time she saw him sitting by the piano, patiently guiding Emily, it felt like a personal affront. She wanted to scream at him, tell him to stop, but the words got stuck in her throat lodged between her anger and her fear of revealing her fractured past. Her relationship with Emily started to suffer, too. Once the joyous heart of their home, Emily became a mirror reflecting Sarah's unfulfilled dreams. The piano, once a beautiful piece of furniture, became a symbol of her deeply buried resentment. She began to distance herself from them, wrapping herself in a cocoon of isolation. Sarah was living in a house full of people, yet she felt alone. The bustling sounds of family life became background noise, and her life felt like a solitary confinement within her own memories. Her thriving career and the seemingly perfect family life had become a facade, barely concealing the storm that raged within her. She was a stranger in her own life, haunted by echoes of a past she'd tried so hard to leave behind. Her story was turning into a tragic symphony with the piano's melody serving as a chilling background score. Sarah's mental health began to erode like sand slipping through clenched fists. The trauma that had been locked away in the dark corners of her mind escaped, prowling around her consciousness like a stealthy predator. It gnawed at her happiness, her peace of mind, and the beautiful life she had created. Her journey down the rabbit hole of her past was not a leisurely descent, but a free fall into the cavernous depths of her repressed memories. Each day, as Emily's proficiency at the piano grew, so did Sarah's anxiety. The sounds of her daughter's music were no longer just painful reminders. They were triggers that shot her back into her dark past. It was as though she was trapped in a broken time machine, spiraling between her traumatic past and the unsettling present. Her erratic behavior and the nightmarish visions prompted her to seek professional help. The diagnosis was PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, a label that gave her situation a name but offered little comfort. The woman who once commanded boardrooms now found herself wrestling with an invisible adversary that was far more challenging than any business rival she had ever faced. The lines between her reality and her haunted past began to blur. Emily, her sweet, innocent daughter, transformed in Sarah's eyes into a reflection of her tyrannical mother. Sarah would catch glimpses of her mother's stern expressions in Emily's innocent face, hear her mother's harsh words in Emily's sweet voice. The hallucinations grew stronger and more frequent, tugging at the fabric of her reality, threatening to unravel her sanity. At first, Richard was supportive, trying to be her rock in the tempestuous sea of her tormented psyche. However, Sarah's condition was an enemy he couldn't combat. Despite his best efforts, he was like a lighthouse offering a beacon of light to a ship that was veering off course, unable to steer back. His helplessness in the face of Sarah's deteriorating mental health and the emerging rift between them was a bitter pill to swallow. The loving and supportive wife he once knew was lost somewhere between the echoes of her past and the haunting melody of their daughter's piano. His attempts to reach her felt like echoes bouncing back from a deep abyss, leaving him standing on the precipice of a deteriorating relationship. Sarah and Richard's once harmonious home turned into a theater for a tragic play, where the specter of Sarah's past loomed larger with every passing day. As Emily's piano filled the house with beautiful music, it resonated with the discordant notes of Sarah's internal struggle, driving a wedge further into the family's unity. Through it all, Sarah was a figure trapped in her own psychological labyrinth. The echoes of her past were turning her reality into a disorienting maze. The diagnosis of PTSD was the beginning of a journey, one that prompted to be as challenging as it was necessary for Sarah to reclaim her life from the specter of her past. Sarah entered the realm of therapy, a sanctuary where the pieces of her shattered past could be examined under the harsh light of truth. With her therapist's guidance, she plunged into the depths of her psyche, 
dredging up memories buried beneath years of suppression and denial. Each session was like peeling layers off an old forgotten painting and revealing shocking strokes of a history she could scarcely believe were her own. As the fog of repressed memories cleared, the full extent of her trauma was unveiled. Sarah had not only been denied her passion for music, but it had been ripped away from her violently. Each hum, every innocent tap of her fingers to an unheard rhythm, had been met with a sharp reprimand or a cruel slap from her mother. Music, a universal language of love and joy, had been associated with pain and fear in Sarah's world. She was made to believe that the sweet lullaby of melodies was a siren song leading her towards failure. The revelations were like puzzle pieces falling into place, bringing the distorted image of her past into a horrific focus. Sarah had constructed a fortress around these painful memories, suppressing them to shield herself from the hurt they harbored. Her subconscious had created a dam, but the recent trigger of Emily's piano lessons had caused it to burst, allowing the torment of her past to flood her present. With every new revelation, Sarah's irrational resentment towards Emily's piano lessons began to make sense. It wasn't the piano or the music she despised. It was the traumatic associations that had been branded into her mind. The melody, once a haunting echo of her mother's harsh words, the rhythm, a painful reminder of her physical abuse. The more Sarah understood her trauma, the clearer the root of her hatred became. It was not Emily's budding talent that she resented, but the freedom Emily had to explore a world she had been barred from. Her daughter was living a dream Sarah had been brutally awakened from. Every piano note was a stark reminder of what could have been, of the joy she was denied, of the passion she was forced to abandon. The therapy sessions were both a lifeline and a mirror, reflecting a past she could no longer escape. Each revelation was a painful blow, but it was also a step towards healing. Sarah was finally learning the language of her distress, tracing the mysterious patterns of her psyche and understanding the profound impact of her suppressed history. Her painful journey into her past was like navigating through a labyrinth where every turn led to a hidden terrifying beast. But each confrontation, each revelation, and each acceptance were guiding her towards the exit. It was a harsh path, strewn with memories she wished to forget, but it was also a journey towards understanding, acceptance, and ultimately healing. One particular evening, Sarah's internal tempest found an external target. Her PTSD-induced episode, fueled by the haunting melody of Emily's piano playing, turned destructive. The beautiful instrument, once the heart of their home, had now become a symbol of her torment. As Emily played, each note stabbed at Sarah's mind, pushing her further over the edge. In a frantic state, Sarah rushed towards the piano, her intent to silence the instrument's music that echoed the painful chambers of her past. But in her frenzied attempt to destroy the piano, tragedy struck. Emily, who was too startled to move away in time, was accidentally hurt. The sight of her beloved daughter, whimpering in pain and fear, was a deafening wake-up call. The veil of her distress was momentarily lifted. The phantom of her mother was replaced by the painful reality of Emily's tears. The sight of Emily in pain was a mirror held up to Sarah, reflecting the havoc her unresolved trauma was wrecking in her family. It was a horrifying realization. The consequences of her unchecked trauma laid bare in her daughter's scared eyes and Richard's shocked face. Regret as bitter as the coldest winter wind washed over Sarah. She had allowed her past to injure her present, to hurt the one she loved the most. The realization stung worse than any physical pain ever could. With Emily's tears, Sarah's world snapped back into focus. It was a cruel jolt of reality that shook her from her reverie, revealing the monster unresolved past had turned her into. In that moment, Sarah made a resolute decision. She would no longer be a prisoner of her past. She decided to confront her trauma head-on, to wage a battle against the demons of her history for the sake of her family's future. The healing process was no longer an option but a necessity. Sarah committed herself to more intensive therapy sessions, stepping into the battle arena with renewed determination. 
Her therapist, a guiding light in her tumultuous journey, welcomed her newfound resolve. The therapy was painful, a brutal excavation of her past, but with every session, Sarah could feel the burden of her trauma slowly lessening. Parallel to her therapeutic journey, she also made an effort to mend her relationship with her family. She began by making amends with Emily, her heart aching with regret every time she recalled the incident. Despite the awkwardness and the remnants of fear, Emily's unconditional love for her mother helped bridge the gap. Richard, although hurt and confused, provided a silent support that Sarah clung on to like a lifeline. In the midst of her battles, Sarah's life took a crucial turn. Her journey was far from over, but she had taken the critical first steps. Sarah was no longer running away from her past. Instead, she had chosen to confront it head on. Her journey towards healing was also a journey towards reclaiming her life a life where the melody of her family's love would drown out the dissonant notes of her traumatic past. This story not only involves the discovery of a husband doing something unexpected with a daughter, but also takes us into the complex layers of a woman's psyche, revealing how childhood experiences can shape and often distort our realities. The terrible event that happens is a catalyst for the protagonist's self-awareness and healing journey proving that sometimes our worst experiences can lead us to our greatest transformations.